Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. My friend, my brother, the one who called me. I'm fine. Good to see you. Good to see you. As you are easy. Our guest tonight is Mr. Steve Olusheya Yorinde, originally from Ibadan. He's one of our. One journalist that all of us are proud of. You know, I like I said earlier. He began his journalism in 1991 with the Guardian, the one, the paper that prides itself as a flagship. From the Guardian, he crossed over to the Comet. From the Comet, he came back to Punch, where he rose to become the editor of Punch. Not Punch, not Saturday Punch, not Sunday Punch, but the Daily Punch. Then after some time, he left again to go. The, to join uh, National Neuro. At National Neuro, he combined uh, two capacities. He was the managing director, school editor in chief. From there, he joined uh, the administration in Lagos, first as a commissioner for information and strategy. Then, after some time, he was moved to tourism, arts and culture, where if you ask me, anyway, he has excelled in all the he excelled in all the ministries where yeah, he, he functions. And by the way, Mr. Steve is a literary journalist of note, a polyglot. He's happily married to the ever delectable Kemi Tope, and I've been three gorgeous children. I'm happy, I'm delighted, I'm excited to have you join us this night. So, Mr. Irene, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, my brother Azu. Thank you so very much. All right, all right. I need to be on a Friday evening. I like that. <laughs> it's a TGIF, TGIF yeah, you know, interview. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. So, let me shift. Um, how is life outside government? Oh, it, 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 it is the normal kind of life. <laughs> I mean, at, at best, I only spend about four years, you know, okay. in public service. <laughs> okay. Four out of 50. <laughs> is my needs, you know. So, you know, and, and what you know, people like us will say is that you know, once you have the privilege to be called upon to serve, yeah. always remember that you have a second address. No, no public service can it's or should last that. forever. Ever, yeah. Maybe some other people have been, in quotes, privileged, you know, okay. to have spent such a long time. Because when you hear about people that are, one way or the other, almost professionally inclined as to, you know, full-time politics, you know, I'm yeah. not talking about people who are career uh, public servants, you know, people who okay. move from being an officer to director to permanent secretary. But even at that, you will still yeah. have to retire at 60. Or leave after 35 years in service. But I'm saying that there are other people, you know, that we don't have to blame them. It, it could be their own trajectory. 
spend okay. as much as 10, 20, 15, perhaps 25 years, you know, moving from, say, House of Assembly to uh, <laughs> Cabinet to House of Reps <laughs> to go to Senator. To senator. <laughs> you know, it is the life of yeah. And it's not, it's not limited to Nigeria. You know, if you yeah. look at uh, other people abroad, I mean, Joe Biden may likely become the next American president. Every president. Basically, the thing we hear about him is that in the last 40, 45 years, he has been serving the American system. Some people are like that. It's a life of okay. service. But for people like us, uh, um, it was an opportunity, one, to experience public service, and two, to be able to contribute, you know, to one's uh, state and one's fatherland. And once you've done your bit uh, for that particular period, return to your normal setting. <laughs> Reset your brain. Uh -huh. I return to, right. to normal life, to your family, to your friends, to the newsroom, even though the newsroom <laughs> has gone virtual now. <laughs> yeah. Just like we're doing now. You know, so, you know, so it, it's been more than one year, you know, after government and basically one has been rolling as he has always rolled. All right. right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Elenio, how yeah. did you spend the first day outside of the uh, government? Your first day outside of government, how did you spend it? Sorry, say, say that again, please. Come again, one second. Your, your first day, first day outside of government, how did you spend it? Oh, our last day was the 28th of um, um, May 2019, okay. last year. That was the okay. last day in office. You know, okay. uh, a few of us, a few of us, practically everybody around the governor and a few members of cabinet had to work till the last day. You know, he needed to, the governor needed to record uh, his send forth message to negotiations and everything. So I, I believe we probably worked till about 10 p.m., you know, that day. Wow. And then wow. preparing for, for the swearing in of... Um, uh, his successor the next day, which was Democracy Day, as at that time, uh, May 29th. Uh, so the first day for me outside of government was the inauguration day. Um, I, I wasn't yeah. able to go, so I spent the whole of... I, I first had a very good long sleep when I got home, <laughs> like around midnight of the 28th. <laughs> Which was a luxury <laughs> because you knew that you were not you were not going to be called by the ADC or the chief protocol or the permanent secretary the next day. But I also knew that yes, I wasn't going to go to TBS for the inauguration, but I needed to watch it. So I woke up um, fairly early just to follow the proceedings, you know, on TV and wish them well. And after. Uh, the new governor had been inaugurated. I went back to bed. I had breakfast and then went back to bed and then woke up and then packed and prepared because I had arranged a little getaway, you know, for a, for just about a week uh, just to recalibrate. <laughs> get, uh, <laughs> recalibrate, get your bearing right. Don't, don't also forget that the first, um, the first three days of June, uh, um, are usually devoted to things media internationally. Yeah. So yeah. the Glasgow uh, World Editors Forum was happening in Glasgow. So part okay. of what I Scotland. did was to, uh, in Scotland, you know, to spend uh, the 30, 30th and 31st um, to chill, just sleep, just lounge to and relax. everything, to relax. And then the yeah. next few days in Glasgow for um, the World Editors Forum, you know, which I missed for like three, four years before then. You know, World Editors Forum was part, and the World Editors Congress for a long time, about 10 years from 2006, 2007, till about 2015 was um, on my calendar on a yearly basis. So it was nice wow. to return to the World Editors Forum. At that time, it was relaxing, it was reinvigorating, you know, among um, other people, and it's, it, interestingly, that was the edition where our own Teosi, the former okay. editor of the Punch, 
of Mr. course, Mr. Yeah. Said the vice president. First time that wow. you have a female, and first time that you have somebody, a black lady, young, from single black lady, you know, from becoming Nigeria. the vice president of the World Motors. Wow. So that was wow. my first day outside of government. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't forget it. I remember it like, like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Now, what would you describe as your greatest achievement in government? Well, um, I, I am not into superlatives. <laughs> I like that. It would be tough. <laughs> it would be tough to pick just one achievement. Um, okay. But uh, without sounding um, immodest, on the one hand. And without being uh, cheeky, on the other hand, I, I would think yeah. that the opportunity to be able to serve in two ministries was very important for me. I didn't plan wow. it. I didn't know it would come. You know, uh, spent two and a half years or thereabouts in information. You, you know, um, for me, it was an opportunity and an advantage. Uh, okay. Because if you were to serve at the federal, the two yeah. ministries ideally would be together. If you were yeah. to serve in River State or your state, you know, and a few other states, you will find yeah. information, culture, and tourism. But you yeah. know, Lagos is different. Uh, since 1999, Lagos decided that uh, the strategy the of the state, yes, the strategy of the state will be driven by information and media, which was okay. why you had, you know, which, which, which was something that was inspired by the Israeli um, example as wow. relayed to me by the man who designed it all, Mr. Delia Lake, our boss. Wow, you know, so that's since nice. that time, Yeah, wow. absolutely. So since that time, um, information and strategy in Lagos had always been in one, you know, on one side, and then as a matter of fact, until 2015, tourism didn't, didn't even stand as a full ministry. Wow. It was always with another ministry. It was uh, originally with intergovernmental affairs. Later, they took yeah. it to home affairs, you know, stuff mm. like that. It never stood alone until 2015 uh, when uh, former governor Ambody felt that uh, he needed to sell and market the state through wow. uh, creative <laughs> content, through entertainment, through tourism. So he brought uh, culture from home affairs and brought uh, tourism from intergovernmental affairs to form a full ministry. So for me, uh, having the opportunity to, uh, to crisscross both within four years uh, was very significant because those are two major interests that I hold very dear. And those wow. are also my constituencies now, even as a consultant, yeah. as a media person, you know, as, you know, the public commentator, etc. It's always media and journalism, and then arts, culture, entertainment, and tourism <laughs> for me. Wow, I love so that. So if you I think that. that was an achievement, I would say... <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, <laughs> my, 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 my next question is, you know... What, what, what would you have loved to accomplish as a commissioner in those two ministries that you traversed that you were not able to, to accomplish? Was there anything, any major thing that you... For the Ministry of... Um, for the Ministry of um, Information and Culture, are you there? Are you there? I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, yes. Okay. I can hear you. For the Ministry of Information, for the Ministry of Information and Culture, um, I, I think we tried and succeeded basically in fixing the broadcast arms of the ministry. Um, you know, yeah. we rejuvenated LTV uh, um, and the two radio stations, the QFM Radio Lagos okay. and Traffic Radio. Um, LTV, LTV could cover... Um, Live five live programs up till today simultaneously. Wow. If you remember, wow. we were in London together at some point, as if you remember. Yeah, I remember. We were able to cover. I hope I'm not revealing too much. I'm not revealing too much. 
<laughs> you remember we were able we were able to cover the Notting Hill Carnival where yeah, Lagos yeah. had a corner. Uh, Notting Hill, as you know, is the second biggest carnival in the world after Rio in Brazil. LTV yeah. was able to cover it live from there. Live. So that technology, you know, and that um, efficiency was made possible because the governors at that time was interested in it. So we succeeded in that part. We also succeeded in um, the social media arm, making sure that social media, you know, drives the content, you know, and the image making responsibility of government. Um, yes, we also tried with the printing press, but we were at a time where we had um, sought and gotten the partnership of uh, uh, Deloitte as our consultants because uh, the Lagos State Printing Press, with all the machinery and the new machines that former uh, Governor Fashola invested in, which Governor Abumodi inherited and wanted to expand on, um, we were still basically um, printing only for government. And we felt that the capacity... Yeah, the capacity was low and was being a bit underutilized. So we got external brilliant minds from Deloitte. You know, they made submissions to us. So we were in the process of ensuring that we up the ante for the for the printing press before you know um, um, the administration got rounded up. Uh, for tourism, um, as you know, two things that I think we were not again. It, it, it wouldn't be a regret. It would just be that you didn't get to uh, executing those Doing things. Them. One, yeah. yes. One would be that we had completed the Lagos State Tourism Master Plan, which is a major, major, massive document detailing everything that is needed to be done in Lagos as far as the creative sector and tourism promotions are concerned from the year 2018 to the next uh, 20 to 25 years. That document is still there, and I'm glad uh, that Mrs. Uzamat Akibile Yusuf, Yusuf, who is the Commissioner for Tourism now, has revisited it, you know, and has given it again for a second look to professionals so that they can now begin to execute it. Uh, the other thing that we were also not able to Again, we've done it. We succeeded in getting six hundred thousand dollar initial grant from the Ford Foundation to start work on the Lagos Museum. Lagos does not have a proper museum. The only museum that Lagos State, as a state, could lay claim to is the Slavery Museum in Badagri, which we renovated, which is working fine. Um, wow. There's the National Museum in Lagos, but as you know is flying at half mast. Um, more than or about 90% of all the artifacts within the National Museum in Lagos are not on display because the museum is not adequate and then the facilities to store them are not there. So because of that, Lagos State Government under our administration proposed to have a standard Lagos State Museum for which Ford Foundation was interested, and they gave a hundred thousand dollar grant out of the nine hundred thousand that was that was meant to serve as the initial work. The money, of course, went directly uh, to the Rap Apubam um, uh, Consortium. They were the people that uh, built the uh, Olusha Goba Sojo Library, and they built most of the world class museums in the world. Uh, that is how uh, international agencies work. They won't give you the money directly. It's your money, they will but they will send it for what you know. Um, it looks to me like that project is stalled. Uh, but thankfully, the other project that we started and we took to 75% completion was the J.K. Randu Center for Yoruba History and Culture. I'm aware uh, that the present administration, the administration of Governor uh, Babajide Songwulu, uh, has now uh, entered full gear into completing it. And it's a major wow. thing because it's also like a museum, you know, and mm. it's a major, major pro uh, project. So in the absence of the Lagos State Museum starting 
anytime soon, it looks to me like this administration will complete the J.K. Randu Center for Yoruba Cultural and History. And that will be a world-class facility because part of what we succeeded in achieving was to get the British, British Museum in January of 2018 to sign on to releasing 20 of the major artifacts that were taken out of Nigeria, including the very first one, the Landers tool. Landers mm. tool was the first that was taken out of Nigeria, uh, I think in the 15th or 17th century, and is still at the British Museum. And they have agreed that the Landers tool, together with about 19 other uh, major artifacts, will be released to Lagos State once uh, the J.K. Randu Center is complete. So it's a good thing, you know, that this administration wants to complete it. And then, fantastic, we can now say, the ones in France, let's have back our works. The ones in America, the ones in the Caribbean, etc. Once you have a proper major uh, architectural facility that can house them, and the that people from all over the world can come and visit, they will release those works to us, I believe so. And wow. we have already signed and delivered on the British uh, Museum. So 20 of those works, wow. you can imagine if they return to Nigeria, that alone will want to make you take your kids to the center, to the museum. Wow. You know, to say, let us go and learn about our history. Let us go and see what the Oyibos have returned back to us. Now, back to our, uh, let's see, you, you moved from information to tourism. Now, of the two ministries that you traversed or you crisscrossed, you know, to put you now, which one did you enjoy most and why? Okay, who, who do I like more between you and Michael Fiam? Does that answer the question? <laughs> between my right eye and my left eye, which one do I, which one do I see with better? <laughs> no, but, no, but, um, um, the point the point is um i can't i can't pick one over the other okay. you know uh, they are both i mean like i said earlier when you asked uh, what, what was my biggest achievement for me the opportunity yes. to serve in those two ministries yes. was fantastic um they are not the same type of ministry um, the professionals in the Ministry of Information are different. You are dealing with information officers. Uh, you are dealing with people with media background. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, things that you have done before. Whereas in tourism, you are also dealing with a different set of professionals. But those who are in the creative sector, who are into archaeology, who are into preservation, who are into event management, you know, so. It's like having a tire and a kite kind of like having the twins, identical twins. You just have to learn to love them equally. You know, they serve um, similar but slightly different purposes. As the Commissioner for Information, you're basically uh, like the spokesperson and the image maker of the state. But as Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, you are like the marketing and creative officer of the state you know, two important responsibilities, um, similar in certain areas, but of course, very independently chiseled. So um, um, my office at the Ministry of Culture was finer because that office used to be the office of the Deputy Governor when Ashwaju was using the roundhouse. So the moment Ashwaju moved to uh, the new Lagos house, the deputy governor now moved to the roundhouse. And then it now turned out that where the deputy governor used to be, you know, is now the office of the commissioner for tourism. So it's bigger, wow. um, possibly more beautiful, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still had you. <laughs> you know, but, but in terms. But in terms of the volume of work that went out of, if you compare the two, definitely uh, information and strategy was a lot more loaded because it was a daily thing. 
It was daily. We created basically like a mini newsroom. And I was lucky that I had a thoroughbred professional, uh, Mr. Poladi Emi, to work with, who I want to be the very first journalist that will be made a permanent secretary in the Ministry wow. of Information in 2015. Wow. Every other person that has served um, in that ministry as a PAMSEC was never a core professional. A journalist. It's only now that Mr. Benga Motosho is serving there that you now have another professional as his, um, as his permanent secretary. So I was lucky, wow. and I also had the privilege of working with Foladi Emi, you know, P.S. Baba, we all call him. And he has a way of, you know, <laughs> of mingling with everybody. So I also, I also had the opportunity of having him spend one year. I actually met him again. He left information before me, went to tourism. I never knew that I would go to tourism. He was like John the Baptist that went there to prepare before the grounds for me. <laughs> wow. You know, so so both places for me are, are important. How easy was it for you to get yourself reintegrated into the media circuit after your sojourn in, in government? Um, very easy, very easy because I never um, fully left the industry. Uh, you recall that by 2013, I had moved out of regular, intense newsroom environment. But I moved into syndicated, you know, column space. I moved into media consultancy space. I moved into book publishing space. And then government started in 2015. By 2014, when my good friend and neighbor, um, Simon Kolawale, started okay. um, the cable, we were comparing notes as to what he would do and what I would do. He had left uh, this day, but still keeping this the day. column. I had left Mirror, you know. I was doing a syndicated, you know, column, blah, 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 and was even also writing for the cable. So I knew that we were all going to be players within the digital space. Our future, we knew, was going to be digital. But of course, we also realized that the future was not something far away. We started, mm -hmm. we, we are already living the future. The future is now. Um, so while I was preparing for two projects, one, the general interest kind of news, but with a specialty, I've always known that I was going to do a niche online publication, which is part of what I am doing now, the culture newspaper, TCN. Yes, um, we'll culture that. Culture that. Yes, as yeah. a publication yes. and as a TV channel. So it was not difficult at all because um, um, the foundation had always been there. <laughs> you know? And once you knew, you, you will have at least a minimum of six months or they're about to prepare your exit. So you knew, since the governor was not coming back, even if the governor was going to come back, there was nothing that would guarantee that you would return that to government will... anyway. Sure. You know, so once uh, your administration is winding up, part of what will preoccupy you will be what next. And I've always known what next, because I really never left what I was going to return to. So it was pretty easier. And... And you know, everybody in our industry is basically um, dealing with the same issues. Uh, we are confronted with the onslaught of, I mean, you and I attended the, uh, at the WhatsApp conference that Mr. Larry Dewood did, you know, which was fantastic and brilliant. So we are confronted with the same need. So every media event from um, the end of June last year till Corona came, in February, March, I made sure that at least almost everything media I attended. And part of what we said we would do with TCN was to raise a younger generation of reporters and journalists. So for me, it was not difficult. It was like the industry was waiting for one to return. You know, so for me, it was seamless. <laughs> Very seamless. Uh, in coming back. 